Thanks for joining us on News Today with me, Kemini Nyamani Amano. Coming up, Christian Council calls on government to partner with religious bodies in the construction of proposed 200 community senior high schools. Ahead in business, senior economists at the Institute of Economic Affairs says the weak fundamentals of Ghana's economy is responsible for the frequent depreciation of the city. To come on the foreign front, the trial of over the next hour, I'll bring you details of these stories and plenty more. Don't go away. I'll be right back. This is news today. The Christian Council is also calling on government to partner with religious bodies in the construction of the proposed 200 community senior high schools. President Maham on Tuesday reiterated his government will this year construct two batches of 50 senior high schools. Uh, politicians, economics, religious bodies here, yeah, all religious bodies, not only not just churches, not just as churches. key partners, and let's give them the recognition. Let us give them the encouragement. Mm. If government wants to have 200 secondary schools, there must be a dialogue between government and religious bodies mm. that uh, you have done it before. Together with you, we are going to build the 200. Uh, uh, secondary schools. Absolutely. To me, that is how that partnership must be. But mm. you should not sideline them that it is this uh, a party that is party manifesto. Mm. If we're able to do it, it's good for every Ghanaian. So churches, Muslims, all come together, let us build the 200 Absolutely. schools. That's why Again, General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Kwabna Uponi Frimpons, called on the two leading political parties in Ghana to endeavor to build consensus to promote national development. You are speaking on News Desk Tuesday. Discussions, public discourse, you know, have been uh, overtaken by uh, political partisanship. Now, every, especially the two main political parties. Mm. And so you realize that national interests, you know, national issues really are giving way to uh, 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 political interests, political issues. A clear example is the challenge we have in building consensus even at parliament. Mm. You know, I mean, if the issue is an issue, code, even though maybe national int interest issue, now you can see that all, I mean, Party A people were rallying together the issue, and Party B, will, and then they fight. So now it's okay, we have either minority, we have the majority, that kind of thing. So consensus building now, even in this country, is a problem. And it's all because of how p political partisanship is dominating uh, discussions. There's something we call objectivity in governance. This mm. is what is eluding us at the moment. But we should, because we are in not to self political interest. We are to serve the national interest. Mm. Now, this is where we pray and hope that our president will be able to lead us the coming years. That can we move from partisanship to a realm where now we are doing a national interest business. Mm. We are placing the Ghanaian dignity at the center of engagement. If we don't do, or uh, we don't have objectivity in governance, it may take us forever to develop this country. As a country, we also need to heal the wounds of mm. our history. You see, people are, people f that, that's pain, wounds, all the various uh, traditions, you know. And everybody is waiting for opportune time. Mm. Also, you know, kind of to punish the other person. We need to, to stop, pause somewhere, and say that we will not carry the pain of yesteryears to tomorrow. Mm. And as a country, let us reconcile ourselves. And especially the two main political parties must be able to reconcile this country. Mm. They, 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 are, they are pushing their pain on us. Some fisher folks at Awule Kope near Dokochina Number 1 were attacked over the weekend by some natives of old Dokochina in the Banda district of the Bunahafu region. The fisher folks who have settled at the Bwe National Park watch helplessly as their houses were burned to miss gunshots. Nesta Kafuya Juma visited the community and here's his report. 
Residents of the island village said the incident happened at a time their men had gone out for fishing on the Black Volta. They indicated that the gun-wielding men numbering 10 fired warning shots to ward off anybody from coming close to the scene and destroyed their property. Some of the residents who attempted to stop them were beaten and they could only call on officials of Ghana Association of Sustainable Fishing Communities to come to their aid. Some residents gave account of what happened. The assembly member for Bui, Maxwell Badago, expressed displeasure at the attack, which was allegedly carried out by the people of Old Dokuchina. He called on government and the national security to help relocate the fishermen in order to protect them. We are in a serious need of government to come and help us all to fight this thing to keep the Green National Park survive and also for the fishing industry of the uh, Green Lake to sustain so that we can have a good environment of this part of the, the country and that can help us achieve a good livelihood for our um, resettled communities and uh, all the lake uh, catchment area. We are pleading with government to allocate some good area around the resettlement communities for all these people to come and settle out of the park so that their children can have a good education. Meanwhile, Joy News has learned that the attackers from Old Dokuchina are threatening to mount another major offensive on the fisher folks of Awulekope. Let's go over to the telephone and talk to John News' Nestor Kafui Juma over the latest development. Hello, Nestor. Hello, my sister. Thanks for joining us. We understand that the people or the residents of the Awule Kopi community have been relocated. What more can you tell us about this relocation? Um, yes, exactly. The information I've picked up uh, indicates that the people at uh, Awule Kopi have uh, relocated elsewhere. Mm. Because of the fear that um, those people who came to attack them are gearing up to come and uh, attack them once more. Because of the fact that um, the new team visited them with other people around. So, um, so far, they have relocated. To where? Um, they are not able to specify their current location for the fear that the people who follow them up to there the area they are. Mm. Uh, tell us about this old area. What, what does it look like now? Um, it looks deserted. Um, the burnt houses are just there. Other ones which were not burnt uh, look deserted. No mm. one can be found around the area. Uh, it doesn't look like um, someone or anybody is staying there mm. currently. Mm. Has the police intervened in this matter since it started? Um, uh, my sister, there is one thing. Coming from the hinterland, going to the island, is a very long distance. There is no security. There is nothing there. Mm. The children, pathetic. There is a pathetic situation there. The children are just left unattended. They don't have any social amenity. No school. They are just there. So it's difficult for the security to get there. I think it will take some time for the security to get there. So um, the people, when I was speaking with the people, mm. um, they were saying that though they are placed central, they would like to appeal to the authorities to at least uh, send some security people so that they will be guarding them. I see. Thank you very much, Nesta. Nesta Kafui Ajoma joined us from the Bono Afro region. Tells us that uh, residents of Awolo Kope have relocated to an undisclosed location. Move on to some other stories. An organized labor 
has threatened to take the transaction and the sale of Merchant Bank Ghana Limited to Fortis Private Equity Fund to court to ensure transparency and accountability. The decision comes after the Bank of Ghana and SNIT declined to engage organized labor on the matter, while the president has denied any involvement in a case of conflict of interest. Organized labor, meanwhile, finds their response unsatisfactory and totally unacceptable. Organized Labor on December 13, 2013, called on the Bank of Ghana and SNIT to suspend the sale of Merchant Bank Ghana to allow for further investigations into the deal they described as controversial. They are, however, displeased with the responses from both parties. They are statement to the effect that the issue is in court unacceptable because we thought that uh, given the public outcry and the developments in it, uh, the fact that it's in court shouldn't stop us from engaging us. Uh, indeed, we were quite not satisfactory with the, I mean, just the response that the issue is in court. Because for now, uh, I think what is in court, uh, I think what has been discussed has been the locus of uh, whoever, uh, a winning who went to court. And that's what an appeal has been made. So the main substance is yet to be looked at. And we thought that uh, Bank of Ghana and Senate should have given us an opportunity to uh, engage with us and then uh, deal with the concerns that have been expressed. The labor groups are also poised to ensure transparency in the sale of Merchants Bank through legal means. Today, organized labor met to discuss the whole issue about bank of uh, um, Merchant Bank sale. And after an extensive discussion, uh, various options uh, were tabled by organized labor, including a legal action going to court to ensure transparency and accountability in public life. So within the period ahead, uh, organized labor is engaging its lawyers and all those who matter in it to proceed to court uh, along other actions that organized labor will undertake. For now, we will come out with uh, all the issues. Uh, we are in the process of doing all that. And uh, we'll get you informed uh, when we are ready. But we're giving ourselves a very short time within a week to get ourselves prepared for our lawyers to go to court. The sale of the bank door sealed, he bemoaned this politicization and called for stakeholders to look into the matter with objectivity. Senior economist at the Institute of Economic Affairs has an idea on how to deal with the country's uh, dwindling value of the Ghana CD on the currency market. I'll tell you exactly what it is when I return. You're welcome back to News Today. Members of some youth clubs affiliated to the WA Central constituency of the New Patriotic Party have given a three-day ultimatum to the WA Central constituency executives to either comply with the constitution of the party in respect of appointments or face legal action. They accuse the constituency chairman, Ali Karim Kamara, of making appointments to the executive committee of the party without recourse to the party's constitution. Rafiq Salam reports from the area. According to the youth clubs, Article 6, Clause 3 and 6, Clause 5A at, of the party's constitution states that all appointments should be made to reflect the diversity and the national character of the party. This, the youth clubs said, have not been adhered to, alleging that appointments have been done without recourse to the aforementioned constitutional provisions. Comrades, so sad, so sorry to say, it is an appointment of a, a, a syndrome known as family, friends, and cronies. That is, appointments to influence a certain voting pattern in the impending regional elections. The worst of it all is that the parliamentary candidate, the constituency secretary, the constituency secretary vice chairman, and the regional executive committee were not consulted for a bit. This is a fundamental breach of the with great impunity and should not be overlooked.
This action is not only unfortunate, but also an alien to the new patriotic party. The youth clubs gave a three-day ultimatum to the constituency chairman, Ali Karim Kamara, and executives to either comply with the constitution of party or face legal action. Meanwhile, the West Central constituency chairman of the party has refuted the allegations. Ali Kamara said he has done no wrong in making the appointment and is prepared to meet his accusers in court. Let's do some business news now. And senior economist at the Institute of Economic Affairs, Dr. John Kwache, says the weak fundamentals of Ghana's economy is responsible for the frequent depreciation of the city. Speaking on his desk, Dr. Kwache mentioned the overdependence on raw material export and huge imports is putting pressure on the economy and called for a total diversification of the economy. The currency has been depreciating you know, all the time. We are able to stop it only for, you know, short periods of time when maybe the Bank of Ghana is able to get into the market in a strong way. But the fundamentals of the economy are the factors that determine our exchange rate. Mm. And we have very weak fundamentals. Mm. Now, if you look at our export base, for instance, we are still producing essentially these uh, primary commodities. You know, that's what we are selling, you know, cocoa, gold, timber, and now we have oil. You know, these are primary commodities that uh, do, do not fetch us mm. a lot on the international market. And then you go to the import side, and it seems that as a country we are importing virtually everything into this country because our industrial base mm. is so weak, and therefore we, we don't we don't manufacture or produce a lot of goods in this country. So there's always this wide gap between our import demand and then, then our export earnings. Mm. And that is what drives, you know, causes the exchange rate to be depreciating on a, on a uh, you know, constant basis. Mm. So we, to stem that, we have to, you know, address the, this uh, imbalance between imports and exports. And this needs uh, that we, we must transform this economy in a very fundamental way, move away from this uh, over-dependence on this so-called Gajisberg economy, mm. colonial structure of the economy, and industrialize, you know, mm. and, uh, you know, diversify the export base. So that, that's uh, something that we need to take very mm. seriously over the, over the long term. Dr. Kwache also spoke about government's plans to issue Ghana's third seven-year bond in May 2014 to raise 300 million Ghana cities to the Bank of Ghana. Somebody, the government has to exercise a lot of discipline and there should be a strong oversight, you know, monitoring of the resources to make sure that they are used for the purpose for which they are intended. If that is done, mm. then it's good for the economy, the long-term development of the economy. Every country borrows. There's Absolutely. no question. Every country. Absolutely. Yes, every country borrows. I don't know of you know, many countries, maybe one or two countries that you say, they, ha they make surpluses on their budget. Every country has to borrow, but it depends on what you use the money for. It, once you have a budget deficit, you have to finance mm. it, and therefore you have to issue bonds. And you have to choose between an international bond or a local bond. Those considerations, um, I mean, the factors that go into the consideration, uh, you know, the, the interest rate that you have to pay. Um, and sometimes the government may also use it as an instrument, or Bank of Ghana, yeah. to mobilize a foreign exchange. So the, the consideration as to whether to issue a local bond or or foreign bond mm. depends on you know the purpose which uh, the central bank and the government want to you know uh, achieve but as you said we have been issuing bonds precisely because we have a budget deficit that has to be financed mm. you, you know that's the normal way to do that uh, the government uh, together with the bank of ghana must have done a cash flow mm. in other words the government expense, uh, expects uh, receipts of course from revenues and then the, the payments that they make. Mm. And there's always a deficit. So they have a cash flow, you know, throughout the year, maybe on a monthly basis or quarterly basis. So it is on the basis of that cash flow, mm. you know, that they'll go out, you know, to borrow. Um, so they must have done this, well, scheduled kind of, uh, you know, uh, borrowings. Mm. So, that, uh, so the amounts that they've scheduled, you know, depends on the cash flow 
the projection of the cash flow of government going into the, the well throughout the year. Mm. President John Mahama during his media interaction on Tuesday said universities ought to align their causes to meet demands of the labor market. This, he says, will go a long way in helping address uh, the unemployment situation. Let's take a bite of what went down. I believe that the public works that we are going to engage in are also going to provide jobs. In the housing sphere, I cut the sword for OAS. If you go there and see the number of masons and carpenters and others working, you know, on those sites, you'll be amazed. If SNIT starts to work with the affordable housing project, we're going to have many more people working there. I recently cut the sword for the expansion of the Tema Hubble. In constructing the expanded Hubble, they are recruiting many artisans. And when the Hubble has been extended, because of the volumes of ships that are going to come into the port, they're going to require more hands to be able to handle those volumes. And so by the public works that we're engaged in, if we start building the 100 schools, imagine the number of masons and carpenters and other artisans, steel benders and others who will be employed in building these 100 schools uh, this, this year. You know, so many other public works that we're going to engage in, the regional airports, the district hospitals and all, are going to provide avenues for um, employment. In the natural growth of the economy, jobs are thrown up. If an economy is growing at 7.4%, naturally jobs will be created as a result of that growth. But often when we talk about unemployment, we focus only on graduate unemployment. We're not talking about uh, employment in the informal sector. We almost, almost always focus on graduate unemployment. With graduate unemployment, we have a problem. We have a problem. If you take graduates, the job market is looking for technical, technicians, mechanical engineering, and those kinds of skills. Now we're training a lot of marketing graduates. We're training a lot of uh, M M business administration graduates. We're training a lot of graduates who are not, by the structure of our economy, are not immediately absorbable. And so it takes a, some time for them to find jobs. So if we concentrate only on graduates, say graduates are coming out of university, they can't find jobs, you know, then it's to minimize the whole unemployment issue. What we should do is to see how we can align our university programs to suit what the job market is looking for. And so I want us to initiate a discussion on this kind of issue. We must have a, a, a job market survey to see what jobs are out there. Jonathan Osei is executive director of POS Foundation. He's joined me in the studio. We'll take his thoughts on, on, on the president's, you know, uh, comments on, on job creation in the country. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you. I'm going to start with you, a, a, a general thought on, 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 on the president's comments as far as unemployment and job creation is concerned. What, what do you think? Uh, thank you very much. But... Uh to, to, to maybe start with, let me say, the president had his day yesterday. Mm. He was really in, him, uh, in himself. This is because the questions, most of the questions that were being asked were not most of them, but traced with statistics and data. Mm. So the president th did justice to them in the political manner. Right. That is not also quoting any statistics and data. So moving from the general view mm. of he doing well in answering the question in a political manner, mm. we want to address it on the youth and employ employment mm. that he spoke about. Since no statistics were given out, the president, I believe, did not state any statistic. To talk about unemployment in the first place, I want to find out if the president and his cabinet have any data of unemployment in our country. If you want to deal with the problem, mm. you must first start with identifying the problem. Mm. Now, we don't even know how many people are unemployed, both the informal and formal sector. So what, what do we want to do? Mm. Now, let's take this, uh, the statement. He has diagnosed the second problem of, the, of this particular phase right. very clearly. Mm. The, pub, uh, the formal and informal. He talked about graduates, and then he mentioned that the peak kind of people we need are the technical people, mm. which is very perfect. But the question I ask again is, are we looking for the president to retell us what the problem is, or we should look for answers? Mm. Because the answers he gave was like a call 
to the university to come up with courses that will benefit the industry. Mm. We lack research as a country. There should be some pragmatic policies and steps mm. by president mm. or by his government mm. or by the Ministry of Education saying that the president now is saying that I have directed or uh, some, some sort of think tank meeting. Mm. He, he said we should look forward to who should a, look for? a, a national discussion and probably who a should job look for that national discussion. Research. You see, that's why I said we are also trying to share our ideas. Mm. For Christ's sake, he is the president of Ghana. We respect and acknowledge him as such. So he should come up with programs. A question has been asked. Mm. What do you have to offer? Not you suggestion, suggesting a program or an activity or a solution to us. So instead of calling the universities, it's good. Mm. But this time, it should, you should bring the think tanks together mm. to deliberate and research what mm. is on the job market and what courses can be offered in the universities. Now, let me ask you, if we put up this call and the universities don't take it, what happens? Is this problem going to be resolved? Mm. But he is the president. He has command over every activity and every plan. So I am saying that. The president's suggestion is good, mm. but it's not enough, mm. and it does not bring any serious impact. Mm. If we, the problem which he perfectly diagnosed could be resolved, then he should direct the ministry mm. and bring some former educational directors and so on and so forth. Mm. That's why I use the word think tanks to research into the job market, the industries, and then liaise with the universities and go ahead. He, he's also mentioned uh, the fact that the natural growth of the economy would translate into job creation. He's mentioned the fact that uh, public sector uh, projects would generate jobs uh, in, in the future as we see it. There will be people who will be needed for the construction of buildings and roads and, and, and the likes when it comes to uh, se sectoral projects. And then also he's, he made mention of the fact that there's, there's going to be, you know, funding made up, startup capital made available for our young entrepreneurs to 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 start up and 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 grow their business. There'll be mentoring for them as well. What do you think about this? It's, it's good, isn't it? My sister, haven't we been in this country where president upon president have given us promises and upon promises and they don't work? Mm. We are looking for pragmatic steps, mm. promises mm. that have indications. And that could be measured, mm. that what the president or whoever is saying this can be done so or can be measured. Number one, when you, say, when right, you, when, when right. you talk about uh, the employment issue that you talk about, it's a short-term employment. Mm. The president has done well. If that is short-term, but after the short-term, after the construction, what do, do you expect those people to do? Mm. Where do they go and get jobs to do? So this is just the mere short-term. We are looking into the future. And I think the president is doing well to get at least some kind of work for some people to do for the meantime. But at the end of the day, that is not the ultimate. Mm. He is the president. And so when we talk about job, we are looking at the present the, 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 and the future. Mm. And so for that construction and so on and so forth, we pray that it comes to being that people may get something to do. But at the end of the day, what do we get? Now mm. let's get back to uh, the, 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 the second one. Providing startup capital. Startup capital. Then I asked again. Why are we confusing ourselves with youth development and uh, 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 employment? You know why? Mm. We have a complete youth policy that is not being implemented. Within the policy, there should be a youth fund. In the same way the president is saying, mm. so that it, could be, it, it needs to go to parliament, that fund needs to be set up so that it can be regulated. Then we will know how the inflow and outflow of money is being dispersed or whatever. Mm. But here is the key that the president is also saying another thing outside the youth policy. I ask, does this synchronize with the youth policy mm. or is another policy altogether that the president is coming up with? Mm. And when you get governance moving that way, you, you begin to ask yourself, is, they, is it mm. then going to be possible? Mm. Beyond putting the think tanks together to try and address the unemployment situation, what, what steps can we take? After that, then what? They, they discuss and then what? Let me tell you. Mm. When you leave development only in the hands of government, mm. government is overburdened. And these are kind, the kind of statements that we will receive from uh, government and people, and you know, because the burden is becoming too much. The burden needs to be shared with people like the private sector and civil society. Mm. You know why? Now, when the think tanks have met, the research has been done into industry and then the kind of jobs needed and the courses to be offered. 
then we can ask the industry to fund some of these projects. Then when they fund it, it is going back to them because now they will get the right people already trained from the schools and then they get back to the job and then produce results. That we will be talking. Mm. And so if we are not just going to put in the think tanks and let them think, but also going to give some leverage to private sector, to businesses, to be able to finance research in the universities, to be able to support the universities, to come up with the requisite uh, personnel that we need, then we'll be making a headway. Mm. But if government thinks they can do it all and that they don't put in pragmatic steps, like I always say, to ensure that these nice ideas that the president was saying get implemented and they want to do it by themselves or just give a, a, a mere call, then I don't think it will work. Mm. We need to put our ways into action. And it is not the plan. Mm. It is not the policy. It is the tactics and the strategy. Mm. The president has given us the idea. But the idea alone can bring us results. I'm talking about the tactics and the strategy. How the president is going to help the universities, mm. aid industries, bring industries and universities together, beef up research, and then put all what we are talking about, all his nice ideas on paper mm. and make it work. That is what we are talking about, mm. and not just mere suggestions and calling. What people. role can young people play in, 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 the, in the nation's bid to create employment? I tell you, if a young person finds himself in Ghana and do not have any skill, mm. then that person is also not contributing anything to Ghana, so he has no right mm. to be questioning anything. Because what makes you valuable is what you have. If you don't have, you can give. Mm. You only give what you have. So any young person listening to me and who will listen to the president should know that there is hope for the future. But the hope may come only when we have acquired the skills and mm. the kind of requisite training. There are a lot of training all over. When we are able to acquire those training and skills, I know it doesn't come just easy, but after you've attained 18 years, you should be able to find yourself something better mm. to do and contribute to the development of the country. Mm. Jonathan, we'll leave it here for now. And Jonathan Osei Owusu is Executive Director for POS Foundation. We'll move on to some international business stories. And the International Monetary Fund Managing Director, Christine Lagarde, says the fund will raise its forecast for global growth. She said the revision would come in the next three weeks, but did not elaborate, saying that it would be premature to say any more. In October, the IMF lowered its growth forecast saying uh, the global economy remains in a low year. It cuts its forecast growth for 2014 by 0.2 of a percentage point to 3.6%. It also reduced the estimate for 2013 growth by 0.3 of a point to 2.9%. The United States trade deficit narrowed to its lowest level in four years in November as rising sales of oil pushed U.S. exports to a record high. According to the U.S. Commerce Department, the trade gap dropped by 12.9 percent to $34.3 billion, about £20.9 billion pounds in November, the smallest monthly deficit since October 2009. Imports fell 1.4 percent from October as a fall in demand for foreign oil oil offset a record level of imported cars. Exports rose 0.9 percent, boosted by 5.6 percent rise in petroleum exports. U.S. exports were also boosted by stronger sales of American-made planes and machinery. The drop in oil imports was helped by lower global prices. Let's set off to Asia, and China says it will open up some telecom and internet services to foreign ownership. Five areas, including call centers and home internet access, will be open to full foreign ownership, the state-owned Xinhua news, news agency has said. Firms providing online data and analysis services will have a cap of 55% foreign ownership. Foreign companies looking to offer these services will have to base their infrastructure in the Shanghai Free Trade Zone. Sports is brought to you by Tigo and is next when I return. 
You welcome back to news today. In some sports stories, Ghana midfielder Andre Ayew has assured Ghanaians of a swift return to action after visiting Ghana FA President Kwesi Nyantichi in Accra on Tuesday to update him on his injury progress following his successful knee surgery. The Marseille player visited the GFA boss in his office in Accra during the courtesy visit to share his injury experience which has kept him out of action for about two months. The Ghana International has been out of action since picking up a knee injury during the Black Stars final 2014 FIFA World Cup qualifier against Egypt in November 2013. Ayu, who is back home in Accra, has been receiving treatment and has been boosted by the rate of his recovery. The 2014 edition of the African Nations Championships Tournament starts on January 11 and runs to February 1 with Cape Town, Bluffentine and Polokwane as host cities. The tournament is reserved for the best national teams of Africa, exclusively featuring players who are active in their respective national leagues and qualify to play in the ongoing season. Let's take a look at how teams are preparing for the tournament. Now in its third edition, the African Nations Championship makes its way to South Africa for the first time, with Cape Town Stadium set to host the opener on Saturday the 11th of January. Commonly known as Chan, the competition is contested between the best African nations, but exclusively features players who ply their trades at home in their respective leagues. First devised in 2007, the first Chan tournament got underway in February 2009 in the Ivory Coast, with only eight teams battling it out in the inaugural competition. The host failed to make it out of the group stages as the DRC went on to claim the trophy in a 2-0 win over Ghana. The 2011 edition saw the field double to 16 as the likes of South Africa, Cameroon and Angola joined the party alongside the DRC and host Sudan. It proved a fruitful first showing for South Africa as Ama Binaplas finished top of their group with Byron Shongwe ending the tournament as one of five players to have scored three goals. Simon Gomane's assembled squad of lower league players would bow out at the last eight at the hands of Algeria before the North Africans were bungled out via penalty shootout in the semis by neighbours and eventual champions Tunisia. With PSL sides having agreed to release their players this time round, Gordon Egerson will hope his Bafana Bafana side will fare better on home soil. That despite the arrival of Ghana and Nigeria, who field... Olympic sprinter Sharon Simpson told the Jamaican disciplinary panel on Tuesday that she was not and never intentionally took a banned substance. Uh, the 4 by 100 meter relay silver medalist in London blamed a positive drug test on a supplement provided by her trainer, Christopher Zurup. Simpson, 29, said, Nothing I read raised a red flag or an alarm bell. She was one of five Jamaicans to test positive at the national championships in Kingston last June. Simpson and her training partner, former 100 meter world record holder Asafa Powell, tested positive for the stimulant oxaliferin. And in boxing, superstar Floyd Mayweather Jr. will arrive in South Africa next Wednesday for a five-day visit to various boxing clubs around the country. Sports Minister Fikile Mbalula said that the 36-year-old American who is undefeated after 45 fights and has often been cited as the world's best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the past two decades will visit Soweto, Bluffentine, East London and Cape Town exciting times ahead for boxing in South Africa. This after the sports ministry in partnership with Floyd Mayweather Jr. announced the reawakening of a giant program aimed to develop boxing in South Africa. You will know that uh, both domestic and international uh, boxing in our country is a big sport alongside uh, football, athletics, cricket, you can name them. It's a popular sport and many of our fighters have fought at the global scene and interacted with the best boxers uh, in the world, including Floyd Jr. Mayweather, whom uh, some of our fighters, in particular Philip Ndo, had an opportunity to engage with him. Rated as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Mayweather lands in South Africa next Wednesday, and Minister Mbalula announced his itinerary. The leg of the visit will, uh, they will land here next week on Wednesday. It will include Johannesburg, 
uh, Cape Town, East London, and Free State. Normally when big people come into our country, they end up in Soweto. But you can't do anything without Soweto. So we will go to Soweto, do the club, but among others we'll have an outreach uh, in East London, uh, particularly because, as you will all know, that is the home of boxing. And uh, that is where most of the talent of our country. That will be all for the segment brought to you by Tigo. Let's check out some news from across the continent. And at least 26 people have been killed in an eight-hour battle between government and rebel forces in the Democratic Republic of Congo's second city, Lumbumbashi. Please search the assault was launched by the Mai Mai Katak Tanga, a secessionist group in the region. The rebels were beaten back after heavy fighting. It is fighting for the independence of Katanga, the richest province in DR Congo. The group is led by Gideon Kiungu Mutanga, who was freed during an attack by gunmen on Lubumbashi's prison in September 2011. Is. In showbiz, Ghanaian actress Martha Ankuma has taken her acting to South Africa by starring alongside South Africa's finest actress, Lomla Dandala. Yes. Uh, yes. The sexy actress Martha is raising the flag of Ghana high in Honeymoon Hotel, a movie which tells a story about couples who are torn between the past and the future problems, trying to make it work to enable them build a happy home. The movie stars the longest lasting running South African series, Generation Star Homla Dandala and Nollywood actress Beverly Naya. The movie Honeymoon Hotel will be premiered on the Valentine's Day, 14 February this year. I am looking forward to that. And a 12-year-old fan of American rapper Jay-Z, Justin, had the surprise of his life as he got the chance to perform on the same stage with his favorite star. What has been described as a rare opportunity came to the young boy, Justin, who got to perform alongside his favorite celebrity and ended up stealing the show. His mother, who gave her name as Angela, says after the concert, Jay-Z took them backstage and they talked for five minutes. To Angela, she couldn't have asked for anything better because this indeed is a dream come true. Our major stories for today, Christian Council calls on government to partner with religious bodies in the construction of the proposed 200 community senior high schools. Senior economist at the Institute of Economic Affairs, Dr. John Kwachi says the weak fundamentals of Ghana's economy is responsible for the frequent depreciation of the city. But that'll be all for the hour. But there's more news on mindjoyonline.com. Thank you very much for staying through. My name is Kimini Nyamani. I'm going to enjoy the rest of our programs.